Hi, this is Jeff Ross. And for this talk, uh, I'd like to cover the craniovertebral junction. We're going to talk about extradural tumors and infection and inflammation. No disclosures. Here's the outline I'd like to cover. Uh, we're going to talk about neoplasms first, and we'll kind of move up in uh, how aggressive the lesions are. Uh, kind of tried to color code a little bit. So if it's uh, yellow, we're going to be fairly benign. Uh, orange colored is kind of intermediate benign, but aggressive features or difficult to treat. And then the overtly malignant lesions will then jump into some infectious and inflammatory and also talk about uh, some crystal deposition disease. All right, well, we've got a lot to cover, so let's, let's get to it. Uh, the first one we're going to talk in kind of the benign category is an osteochondroma. This is the most common bone tumor, um, thought to be a developmental lesion. Most of these are solitary, um, rare kind of autosomal dominant involvement. Um, and importantly, they can be associated with prior irradiation. Um, cervical spine tends to be most common for, for the spine involvement. Important to do CT because that's going to be best at showing uh, the contiguity of the marrow, underlying marrow, and the cortex with that lesion. So here, pretty simple and straightforward. I've got a lesion that looks almost like, nor looks like normal bone, cortical contiguity that all looks very well defined, and the overall trabecular pattern of the bone itself is also normal. So we can see here, again, the internal characteristics are normal. Nice cort corticated features, a little of an expansile lesion, so osteochondroma. Looks a little bit more challenging on MR. CT is a lot easier to diagnose these, kind of nonspecific on T1, irregular enhancement pattern, heterogeneous on T2. I think I would be fairly dumbfounded trying to figure out what it was if I just had the MR study. So uh, kind of the combination often of CT and MR is very helpful. Next one is going to be osteoid osteoma, uh, well-known lesion, going to be a cause in the spine for painful scoliosis. And the classic uh, is the night pain that's going to be relieved by aspirin. And as you can see there, the lumbar tends to be most common with cervical kind of coming next. Uh, bone scan can show intense uptake. And by definition, osteoid osteoma is going to have a nidus of less than a one and a half centimeter. There is these lesions uh, can be associated with kind of inflammation surrounding them and edema within the adjacent soft tissue and bone. So just by MR, you can be overestimating how aggressive the lesion is. So you have to be careful with that. Here's a CT, pretty classic pattern of the nidus, well-defined, has a bony uh, matrix, calcific matrix. Uh, and then on the MR, a little bit more nonspecific low signal, you see kind of some of the edema in the adjacent soft tissues and the marrow from that lesion. 